Let's talk about academic transition. Transitions among the different points in the academic ladder, I mean from bachelor to master, from master to PhD, from PhD to postdoc, from postdoc to PI or group leader, those are key moments in anybody's academic career. Why is that? Well, because at every transition, you're expected to know different things and you're also expected to take on different responsibilities. The purpose of this video is to look at all of these transitions kind of with, with a more like bird's eye view sort of a more perspective looking at it from a very large distance so you can see what all the changed responsibilities and expectations are along this path. And this should help you navigate that entire path. The first one is from bachelor or master, generally from master to PhD. This is probably one of the most significant and perhaps most underappreciated shifts because in essence, you are now changing from a consumer of knowledge during your bachelor and to a large degree during your master's as well, to somebody who is expected to contribute new science in your PhD. And therefore there's all kinds of other things, all kinds of other expectations that go along with that. The first change is you need to really get results. You need to deliver on results. It's no longer sufficient to just try as during your bachelor and mostly also during your master's because simply during these previous degrees you didn't have enough time to repeat something if something failed. That means you need to be now much more frustration tolerant and resistant to <laughs> the effects of things failing. So perseverance is a key trait that now comes into play for your PhD. During your PhD you will also be expected uh, to take on more mentoring responsibility for example for bachelor and, and master students and it is also quite a change in perspective because you previously mostly probably thought about your own progress but now you're starting at least to also be at least partially responsible for some other people in the team. And finally, project management. You can think of your PhD as one three to five year long complex project that is something you have not done before basically during your bachelor and master's in, in any way. So I think that that is also a major change that you need to basically make yourself you need to be accountable for your progress yourself no matter how you do it if you do it in an app or whatever mental tool you use but you are responsible for making that progress throughout that fairly long period of time and that puts entirely new demands on your energy level on your motivation <laughs> and on your ability to organize things. And what of course is becoming more and more important is communication about your output with your supervisor, with your peers, with your lab members, because you need to navigate an increasingly complex playing field. Next, PhD to postdoc. Postdoc, as I've talked about in other videos, is, is a pretty tricky position because you're still caught up between wrapping up things from the PhD, if this wasn't completely done, delivering on your current project, of course, is the main focus, but then also being the lookout for the next position because postdocs are typically non-permanent. So that means you need to be extra well organized and you really need to invest in your time management skills because otherwise this will not work. And of course, this all comes with increasing pressures. And so you really need to look out for your mental health by taking breaks when you need them, for example. Now your PhD was already a major accomplishment and you should be proud of that, of course. And now you're doing a postdoc, which means you may have moved to a new lab, maybe even a new country, maybe a slightly different field, which means you need to acquire yet again a, a, another set of techniques probably that you apply, methods, skills of whatever kind. And that of course means you need to have that basic willingness and openness to yet again learn new skills and integrate them into your toolbox. And with that to grow, and to enjoy basically the challenge that comes with these new tools and new knowledge. So doing your PhD, you will have already invested in your professional network, your basically your collection of professional friends. And now this becomes much more important during your postdoc because you really need to build that professional support network that you will need for all kinds of purposes for collaborations for making you more productive and for yeah, well helping each other out. And that also means you need to be more proactive about that. You're mostly more in the driver's seat when it comes to that. Maybe during your PhD, maybe your advisor introduced you to a bunch of people, but now it's up to you to make these connections mostly. Next is to come up with a vision for your own research, for your niche that is different from that of your PIs or advisors niche. And that really requires you to get that 
thinking going about this vision about where you want to go with your uh, scientific career and what is your place in that field. That is of course a lot also about develop, developing a good strategy, you know, how do I separate myself from others for example. That requires a lot of thinking. And finally teaching and mentoring becomes more important because now you may become responsible for PhD students in addition to master students and bachelor students. A, a little team may develop around the research line that you're responsible for and you may even help with mentoring young postdocs as they're coming in. So you're really becoming much more involved in mentoring and in sharing and communicating. Now finally the transition from postdoc to working group leader or professor. The big one is of course now you're really responsible for managing a team with all that that comes with. You are basically in charge of people and you have responsibility for other people's careers. And that comes with a lot of extra tasks, you know, giving meaningful feedback, delivering ideas and input, securing funding, keeping track of things, managing conflict, <laughs> controlling your own emotions, and overall basically making that team and your lab better and more than the sum of the parts, which also means setting a certain kind of culture for that lab kind of an, an environmental framework for this group to operate within. And that takes a lot of effort and it is difficult. Second one is definitely writing grants now becomes very important for you, much more so than any other previous career stages, even though there may have been some grant writing, but now this is going to be a major responsibility because this will provide the jobs for the people that will populate your team, of course, and also you know, provide the supplies budget. Now, grant writing is a very, very specific skill and you need to now upregulate that skill and get whatever help you can. Third one is teaching. Now your position comes with a formal teaching load, which you probably haven't had before. Maybe you had some TA assignments, but now you have a full responsibility for the development of a course typically, and this takes a lot more time than you think, especially when it comes to establishing a course for the first time. This will take a lot of your time. And then finally is navigating your department. You are now responsible for a group and so you have to communicate and interact with the colleagues within this department, institute, university or college. This comes of course with additional responsibilities in terms of community memberships and is also a demand on your time. Beyond that is also a broader engagement in your professional network where you are now expected to take more of a leadership role, for example, in learned societies or other groups. Well, and that is it. That is the overview of all the different transitions. And I think you probably got a sense from the new demands and the new responsibilities, the new expectations that come with each of these transitions. And this is exactly why these transitions are so critical and why they're also so difficult to navigate. Now, this is of course an exciting journey, no doubt. There's also many insecurities, but I think knowing from the beginning or wherever you are along this line, what is basically in store for you, I think it will help you prepare for the next step. And so I hope this video helped you get that overview. Let me know what you think in the comments. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.